All right, let's stick with the markets now. I want to bring in uh, Tim Johnson, head of global multi-sector fixed income at BNP Paribas Asset Management. Uh, Tim, good to see you. So you just heard uh, Brian Chung's interview there with Esther George. Do you believe that the time is now to start uh, tapering these bond asset purchases? I uh, absolutely believe it's t uh, time to start the discussion. Uh, you know, I was on uh, your program a few months ago, and I said there's been some uh, substantial, uh, you know, recovery in the economy, uh, and that if the viewers uh, remember the initial beginning uh, asset purchasers at purchases uh, back in March were really directed at um, calming market uh, functioning uh, and increasing liquidity in the market. Uh, at the time, the Treasury market obviously was going through some uh, significant uh, uh, chaos uh, when the pandemic started, uh, and the Fed started these purchases uh, in an unlimited way at first. Uh, and then eventually they uh, took it down to this uh, 120, uh, $120 billion per month. Um, and as the economy has recovered, uh, I do think it makes sense for them to certainly start the discussion about um, uh, reducing it further. Do you think that when it inevitably does happen, we are going to be in for another tape, uh, taper tantrum, or has this market had enough time to price all that in for the day it does finally happen? I think the, I think the latter is, is absolutely the case. I think the market has been discussing uh, taper tantrums since 2013. Um, the Fed and all the members uh, of the committee and the governors uh, are certainly aware of what happened. They're being very careful, very cautious to try to prepare the market for when they start to uh, eventually taper, which I do think will will begin uh, at the end of this year and at the latest uh, in the beginning of next year in January. What do you see as the biggest, uh, I guess, uh, hurdle or or risk for this market right now? We know the Delta variant is, is continuing to spread and we're still trying to wrap our hands around that. We're in an environment where inflation is rising, be it transitory or not. What do you view, though, as the biggest hurdle for this market right now? So I do think the, the market is uh, overly focused uh, on the Fed, frankly, uh, which sounds strange for me to say as a person who worked at the Fed for over a decade um, if you'll recall the July Fed meeting when the dot plot uh, showed some expectations for uh, liftoff into uh, 20, 000, uh, 2023, um, you know, that shook the market uh, for a bit uh, and then it calmed back down. I, I firmly believe that if we have another strong labor report uh, in the beginning of January for August um, and in September, at the September meeting, the discussion about tapering very likely to begin. Um, we're very likely to see some additional dots uh, brought forward, uh, and the market needs to be careful about how it interprets that. I think uh, Esther George was absolutely right. Uh, there's no pre prescribed uh, kind of link between uh, when tapering starts, when it ends, and when rate hikes begin. But I think the market's focus on, on rate hikes is the one thing that could cause a little bit of uh, consternation uh, going toward in, towards the end of the year. Do you think that those, I mean, rates are still near historically low levels. So even if they were to bump rates up once or twice, they're still going to be relatively low when you when you look at a historical perspective. When that does happen, might it just be a knee-jerk reaction to the downside? And do you think there's going to be any material effect for the average consumer when these rates inevitably have to go up, Tim? I, I don't. I don't think it's going to have a material impact on the consumer. Uh, one of the things that... Uh, you know, I think everyone needs to remember is, you know, there's two types of policy that are in, in, uh, influencing growth. One is monetary. The other is fiscal. We're focused on monetary right now because of the Jackson Hole conference. But I do think, um, you know, fiscal policy will matter as well and also help buffer uh, some of those uh, headwinds to the consumer uh, going forward. And real quick, what should a fixed income portfolio be looking like right now with this sort of a backdrop with the, those bond asset purchases going to be uh, rolled back sooner rather than later and with interest rates rising? Uh, we're certainly positioned conservatively right now. We're, we're not overweight uh, major spread sectors like high yield or emerging markets uh, just yet. But we do think uh, towards the end of the year, as the Fed does start to uh, begin tapering, there may be some opportunities as rates move a little bit higher, spreads drift a little bit wider for fixed income investors to, to take advantage of those pullbacks. Um, and I, and I, I do really want to reiterate the point that 
you know, we are not concerned about uh, substantial increases uh, in interest rates, even after the Fed begins tapering. Uh, the U.S., uh, Euro area, lots of other countries have amassed a great deal of debt. Uh, growth is much more sensitive to the level of interest rates uh, than it was even four or five years ago. Uh, so we think that'll put a cap on how high rates can actually go. Uh, and there'll be some, some, some strong opportunities in fixed income for returns and also as a diversifier for, for other assets. All right. We're going to leave it there. Tim Johnson of BNP Paribas Asset Management. Good to see you. Thanks for being on the show today.